Yeah. All right, we on? Yep. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrecking Crew Comedy Podcast Show with uh, Vito D'Amico and... Uh, Mark Arts as well. Mark is back. I'm back. Oh, yeah. Show is brought to you by Majestic Garage. If you uh, get a chance, please check them out on the web. They are the uh, our sponsors. Like them on Facebook. And we've got an amazing show for you today. We've got uh, Brian and Baxter, uh, the 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 real I call them the real uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible that uh, we got them. They're they're great. Yeah, which you know, uh, uh, remind me to congratulate him. He uh, had a he just had a baby. Oh, yeah, he just had a baby, and. Uh, it's Matthew not, not Matthew a... is more of the the talker. Uh, the 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 Brian looks more like um, not a talker. It's it's not it's not completely like a pen and teller situation. He's not a huggable. He's like kind of like me, not huggable. Unless you know, well, maybe he is a huggable you're guy. Huggable. We'll see. You're like straight jacket huggable. I right am. There. I am because I bite. But he he is just just uh uh Matthew's more of the the huggy I guess kind of guy. And I don't know. I don't, we'll find out. But they're both. Uh, they work well. They're they're amazing together. I love them in their their. Uh, if you ever get a chance, uh, just Google them, and you can see yep. that they they've got the cool outfits that I just love. The the green ties. Green ties. They look like Men in Black. They they look really cool, and they do everything from. Uh, they investigate ghosts, poltergeists, uh, UFOs. Uh, stuff people love to believe in but there's always a doubt everybody's got it yeah doubt. yeah like they what they do is you know urban legends they check that out they check out conspiracy theories um oh and it's all really intriguing stuff but they're not they don't they don't go in thinking uh yeah this is real and we're gonna prove it no what i like about these guys is they you know they don't i guess they're like kind of like us where they're a fan they well they grew up uh you know and i'm sure that they 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 just like to ask more questions than than just oh it's a ghost yeah i i want to ask them about that in particular actually what what they're like you know as kids kind of thing and and see if they were compared to other kids more inquisitive or, or whatever remind me to ask them if they've ever helped out like remember that fucking uh that uh what was that that ugly psychic broad uh, the the one that was on the Montel show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh fuck, Sylvia Brown. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. Um, she helped out with uh, uh, you know, investigations, which I find disturbing. Yeah. You know, considering what I've seen on her, uh, she could be wrong most of the time, and she gives them the totally, you know, like it could be. It's because you're not doing it. I right. saw one where she said, you know, it was a black guy that took your kid, and it wasn't, and so all the cops again what would be bitch. looking for a black guy, and it's just, it's disgusting. So I wanted to see if Brian and Baxter have ever helped out uh, the police in that way, or what they've done. Right. Uh, to, to say, well, okay, no, this this person's uh, like a moron. Don't listen to them? That yeah, kind of like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just like to see, because they, they, these guys have been on, uh, God, they've been on CNN. They've been on uh, Space. They've been on, uh, God, what else? Uh, uh, History Channel. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so they've they've done it all. They've been, and, and, and uh, uh, I, I uh, wanted to, uh, before we go too far, I wanted to say thanks a lot to Doug Coning for filling oh, in last Oh, fuck, week. Doug. He was awful. He was good. He, you know when he was here, you know what he did? What? He ate everything. Look at my tank. There used to be, what, 18 fish in there? Count how many are in there. You got a few left. Fucking guy ate about seven or eight every time Seriously. I'd go upstairs. He, he did, I'd come down and i go, Doug? Doug? Yeah. Where's the fish? And like a little tail hanging out of his mouth flipping? No, no. He'd burp and I, I just, I, and I'm like, Doug, I know their names. Where's Lenny? But seriously, thanks to Doug. Yeah, he was, he, he, you know what? He said to me, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you off air, but all right, I'll give you the gist of it. Okay. He said, get rid of Mark. He said, yeah, he, cause he did sit here naked and he is, he is, um, uh, got the biggest pair of breasts you've ever seen on a dude, which I don't mind. Right. I don't mind. And uh, he uh, uh, totally, totally uh, said stuff about you that I just said, that's not true. That's not true. And he's like, oh, 
but remember the time when we were at a club and you were missing like 40 bucks? I don't remember. I'm like, Doug, yeah, I have, why are you doing this? And he's like, fucking Mark, man. It I was Mark. I don't know Doug well enough for him to have any good dirt on me. Well, he said some awful things about you, which hmm. I totally stuck up. Man. I could he's appreciate like, that. He's like, if you know, he doesn't, you know, he brings you down, man. You gotta, you gotta he's do. He's one what of you those do. paranoid dudes. If he wants all of this fame and glory that comes from have, having this show, uh, have at her. Yeah, it's great. We've been getting a lot of. Uh, um, I've had a few people uh, uh, order shirts. Believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm like, fuck, uh, if we had shirts, I would too, love... Uh, too bad we don't know a guy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we do have Wrecking uh, Crew, a uh, comedy podcast. Uh, uh, maybe it's because I was wearing it to the mall, and somebody said, that looks really cool. You guys are the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, all right, cool. And Catherine See, was it like... works. Catherine brought me down to her. She's like, you're not famous. <laughs> and I'm like, right in front of the kids. Uh, right in front of the kids. And I'm like, shut up. Wow. God. It's always you've like met that. her. It's... I mean, you've met him. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid. She's she's the only girl I know with an Adam's apple. Well, yeah, what's with that? She's, uh, well, you know, she's kind of, I think there was that tractor incident when she was a kid. Okay. I think Catherine should have been a kale, if you know what I mean. Kale. Kale. Yeah, yeah, like a, a dude. I... That what? That's new for me. Yeah, what yeah. So tell her that. Tell her I said that, but don't tell her while I'm in the room. I, I won't. I'm not gonna say anything unless, um, like, I'm on the other side of a glass wall because uh, I'm afraid. She is a hitter. So, uh, uh, oh yeah, the show is brought to you by Majestic Garage. Check out their website and uh, like them on uh, Facebook and like us on Facebook. And if you do have a chance. Uh, try and see uh, Brian and Baxter. Check out their website. They do. They do have a. Uh, you could contact them with any questions too. And uh, uh, Baxter's really cool at that. Uh, well, he'll get back to you and talk to you about stuff. And uh, which I yeah. Do they know how like small our, our podcast is? Or no, they you didn't say anything about how nobody listens. Um. Yeah, don't tell him that. No, okay. Like, don't tell him that no one listens to the fucking show. What, okay. Why would they... The guy called me earlier, and he's like, he's a pro. And I was... <laughs> what I was, did I mean? I like, was actually looking up uh, uh, Eaton Fig Newtons, looking up fucking wrestling. And uh, he's called... He's a pro, and he's like, uh, yeah, I'll call you at this time, and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I'm just... I'm sitting there going, yes, yeah, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you better call us uh, on time. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, this is really exciting. I've I've never uh, actually been a part of something like this where these guys uh, they've been on TV like like real stuff like uh, they're 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 a big deal. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. What else have we got here? Um, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, uh, about porn, of course. Um, the uh, the U.S. government's decided that they're just not uh, ready. To release the uh, the information regarding Osama bin Laden's porn stash, did uh, did you hear anything about about that? Because they found apparently a whole whack of porn when they were going through Osama's See, stuff. See, I don't. To me, I, I think I don't believe any of that. The problem being is, this is the thing that I have. I, I you they should have brought in the body. Okay. Well, sure. Just show, just saying. I mean, you could say whatever you want now. You could say he was gay. Yeah. Uh, you could say he had a lover. Uh, uh, whatever. You could say yeah. he had porn. I. This is an age where we need proof. Exactly. I need. I cannot just take your word for it. That you know, when they they killed him. Uh, well, when they said they allegedly killed him, and uh, threw his body out to sea. You no, know, they didn't want him to be a martyr, and they didn't want the. I'm like fuck that. Show. Do, do they eat seafood? Who? Uh, is it is it a Muslim thing where you can't eat seafood or? or no, is that's that a, a Jewish. That's thing. a Jewish thing, right? Because I thought it'd be ironic if the seafood was eating him. No, it just it, 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 like the thing is, I don't know. Now you got me thinking. I don't know if Muslims eat. Yeah, they. Eat. Well, they're fucking. Well, anybody, let us let us know if you know about that. Maybe uh, comment or, or or text us. Yeah, or, but they're in the desert. Whatever. What what fuck? What what are they gonna eat? <laughs> What, they've every, never seen a crab. Not they've all seen, of them. They've seen uh, 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 the closest it came to a crab was a fucking scorpion. That's not all of them. You, you, are you, you, 
or pigeonholing. I am. I will. I will. I do pigeonhole. I had a dream last night. I wanted to tell you, just yeah. real quick. Yeah. Uh, that I bought a chicken. Because we were talking about chickens yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about chicken coops. And uh, my chicken, guess where I had to put the chicken? In your bedroom. No, in the bank. You had to put your chicken in the chicken bank. Yeah, and they hated me at the bank because there was feathers well, they, all over the smell. place. And it smelled. And I kept trying to ask for eggs. And they said it did not lay. And and uh, it was weird. So it was like a, it was like an investment. You you invest your chicken in the bank and the interest you get Well, you, you know get I want to get a chicken. Yeah. Not for eggs. I just want it as a pet. Right, to love. You know? Yeah, because I, I think they're cool. I, I think it's kind of a... Uh, uh, they're not like a dog, though. They're not... They're, I mean, it's a chicken. Well, chickens got that look on them. They always got that look on them like, fucking kill me. You know what I mean? They, like, well, I'm a chicken. And Just, nine times out of ten, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I really want to get a, a chicken. Catherine won't let me because she's a fucking uh, uh, evil uh, uh, person. She's definitely... Uh, she a, thinks a, she's the anti, boss of me, man. Anti-chicken. She's anti-chicken. She doesn't mind eating them, but to own one? Oh. Is that, if you're anti-chicken, like, if you're, does that make you? Oh, oh, wait, wait hold on. Let's hear. Oh, all the way from Denver. Hold on. All right, let's see. Hello? Hello? Hey, all right, hold on. Let me sit you up here. Hello? Matthew, is it is it you and uh, 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 Bowen are there? This, this this is Baxter, yeah, uh, and um, yeah, he he should be there somewhere. Are you there, Brian? No. Hey! <laughs> All right. uh, I told you the man is thrilled. I'm, I'm not here. Just just he he can't wait to go home and take a shit. Honestly, he's just <laughs> this is fantastic. Well, uh, well, folks, we're talking to Brian and Baxter, uh, the real ghost uh, busters. I call them. Uh, how you guys doing? Doing well. Yeah, I'm working. What 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 time is it over there? Have you have you had a, a coffee or a, 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 a cappuccino or? But it's ten a.m. and uh, <laughs> I just uh, just finished uh, the scrambled eggs and pancakes that oh. uh, uh, my mom made. I, I don't want to make it sound like I like live in my mom's basement or something. We're right, right. Visiting, so, but, so she's she's made breakfast. So I'm happy. Good. I'm good. Just for uh, the... Brian, I don't know. Brian had probably had his shot of whiskey or something. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, actually, I'm just working, working on a very big vat of coffee and working on a talk. Hello. Hey, well, you, 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 I was telling everybody, uh, 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 Brian looks more of the huggy type of guy. Hmm. He, he's more of a, of, of a, you know, the, 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 the compassionate one of you two. The opposite of Vito. Something like that. Yeah, I've been accused. <laughs> it's either that or people are terrified of me. You get one of them. Well, you know what I... W one thing that uh, I don't know if a lot of people know, you have one of the coolest um, collections of... He's got the coolest collections of everything from uh, uh, vampire uh, paraphernalia. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, you name it. Like old movie uh, memorabilia. Um, uh, tons of shit that you, he could have his own museum if he wanted to. You ever get a chance? Uh, to... I kind of, yeah, I kind of do. I think. Yeah. Do you? So do you? Do you have them set up? He charges. Sorry. He charges me seven fifty every time I come over to his house. That's cool. Really? But exactly. that is an ex. That is a really cool uh, setup you got. Uh, I watch it. Uh, I see the collections that you get, and uh, uh, I mean, fuck, man, you blow a lot of money on this shit. Uh, well, I don't spend as much as you would think. I just find really good deals and help people, so that helps. Right, right. No, it's great. I mean, uh, um, yeah, if you ever want to do, fuck, open up a museum. Shit, you got so much stuff. Uh, and you you got into this uh, by watching the, the uh, I could be totally wrong, which I probably am, The Exorcist. Is that something that, I mean, I, I to this day, I've never watched... I don't believe in this shit, but to this day, I've never watched the whole movie because it scared the shit out of me. Is how how did is that how you got into it? Well, th this is Baxter. The Exorcist story is definitely mine. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, I, I think Brian was, uh, was influenced 
by the exorcist a bit, but uh, it, it was mostly from the catalyst. devil's portion. Yeah. Right, right. It, it was uh, it was the catalyst for me because you know it. Uh, I was 11 years old, and you know I'm watching this chick's head spin around. Yes. Uh, it, it scared the crap out of me. I thought there's, there, there's no way that there's stuff out there in the universe that can cause this to happen. So I started researching it and found out, no, there isn't any shit out there that causes this to happen. <laughs> I love it. Right. But it is a scary fucking movie. It is. It is. It's the, the, to me, it's like the best movie ever made. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm well, kind of sick, so. That's what I tell people, I go, uh, for best, like best horror movie... Uh, they go to me, have you watched it? I said, well, about 90, well, maybe 50% of it. Um, and I don't believe in that shit, but as a kid, I don't know how old you are, but I'm, uh, 44 now. And when I saw that, it scared, and I, I was brought up Catholic. So, you know, it was the whole thing, the, the devil. And I, I think when you're watching stuff like that, it made you feel, go, am I possessed? Like, am I, am I going to get possessed? And that was the fear. Exactly. That was the fear where you go, holy shit, the devil got into that kid. It could get into me. Uh, I got to close the windows. Uh, fuck. <laughs> I'm not going downstairs. Yeah, yeah. So that movie, to this day, I cannot watch that movie, even though I don't believe in his shit. I just, it just get, it brings it's, this, this. Uh, the movie's just so well done. It's so well done, and it scares the living piss out of me. Did you, did you guys have a religious, yeah. religious upbringing? Sorry? Did you guys have a religious upbringing? Oh, well, I think both Brian and I were were Catholic. Although he uh, he had the, the added advantage of having a nun hanging around him. Oh, yeah, I got to spend my my summers with a nun, so that was that Ooh. was fun. So your knuckles were like in nothing a, else. constantly bruised. Actually, Wait, I've she, se- I've seen she, that movie. She was really cool, and the the thing about that is because she was really cool. I was really dragged heavily into the religion. I just kind of got to see how weird it was from a distance. Right. Now you had a cool nun. That's that's for me. It was weird where I was brought up. We had nuns, and uh, I had uh, sister of our most vicious fucking blood. Mm-hmm. She uh, <laughs> she would she would hit. Um, she would have a stick. And uh, scary as shit. Um, but to hit you, uh, the nuns weren't allowed to hit you back then. They had to have a man. Uh, they could give you the strap, but if they really, if you were really bad, uh, they would call in a, a, a guy to come in and uh, give you a beating. And uh, so the nuns, we what? never, you see, you had a, a good experience with a nun. I never had uh, a nun where I thought, oh, what a, what a wonderful woman. Uh, no, I fucking, I was terrified of nuns. Eh. <laughs> I don't think they're, I don't think yeah, they're I all think like actually that. really cool. The, the only memory I really have of her is she would sit at the piano at my grandparents' house playing ragtime music, drinking beer, and eating pickled pig's feet. It oh, you're the strangest fuck. thing I've ever seen. Oh, <laughs> see, that, that's wonderful. That's Father Ted to me. I mean, that, uh, that, uh, Oh, she, she, Maybe that's why I can relate with that show so well. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean that that you had a great experience. I mean, my priest, uh, I, for I remember going to church to keep warm. <laughs> so <I> would, <laughs> before school, you'd go to church, and I remember sitting in the church, and all I ever I really enjoyed was uh, the artwork, uh, the how warm it felt in there. I always was checking out chicks' asses in church. No, you couldn't. They were all kneeling. Oh. So the 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 priest that that he would do his his uh uh speech in Latin, but he was ninety seven years old, and half the time I thought he was fucking dead. He was around when they were still speaking Latin. Yeah, he he literally met Jesus, and he owed him money. So uh um yeah, that that was kind of it was a weird uh upbringing. Which which now what I love about you guys is. Uh, how I found you guys was through YouTube, where I just said, I want to look up, uh, uh, it was too many ridiculous uh, ghost hunting shows out there, and and I just, I wanted to know how to ghost hunt, and you did a brilliant uh, uh, talk with James Randi, 
and it's called How Not to Be a Paranormal Investigator. And if anyone's out there, right. watch it. It is brilliant. It's so well done. Uh, it's just a, a bunch of guys sitting on a panel explaining, uh, you know, how to ghost hunt, the proper way to ghost hunt, and how these shows, how they they do it. And the great thing about uh, Matthew was, I, you know, when I was doing the ghost show, and mine was totally comedy, but I would get fucking loonies that would think it was real, you know, where they thought, uh, right. uh, believe it or not, and most of the time they were strippers, so I don't know, it was really weird. Huh? But I told Matthew, and I emailed him, because I didn't know what to do. I had somebody email me, and they said, um, <clears throat> my sister's house is possessed, uh, kids are terrified, this long letter, and it, and it freaked me out, and I said to the Matthew, and I said, what do I do? And he replied to me saying, I get these all the time, you know, like the, the, this is, this is, uh, there's people out there that either are, are fooling or they really need help. Um, and he guides them. I, I just, I tell them, um, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll send you, you know, I'll, I, I, I'm sorry. I give him your, uh, uh, Facebook account. I said, get, call him. Cause I, I don't know how to help you. So have you guys ever had like a hostile uh, a situation with guys that are claiming to be uh, uh, ghost hunters or whatever, and they, and they they get pissed off at you. Yeah, right here. They they you guys went oh, at yeah. you guys went at it with uh, uh, some pure pure paranormal, right? That was well, one. the thing. But the thing is, I, I don't think that they get mad at us. Well, they do get mad at us for what we do, but I think they get more mad at us because we actually go after them. Right. You know, we incite the fight, basically. Right. Hey, there's another good tagline for us. We incite the fight. Love it. We incite this morning, the fight. Our, that... this morning our tagline was, we, we were undecided. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I like we incite the fight better. And but... and, and real quick. You really uh, do. How, yeah, how did you guys, uh, we'll get back to that in a sec, but I want to give it a little bit of a, how did you guys come together where you said, you know what, let's do this, uh, let's, uh, um, Let's let's do this, and uh, uh, it's a great team. Uh, you guys look like Men in Black. <laughs> well, you know, uh, think of it this way: when you have to watch this stuff that you know is utter bullshit, um, there's a part of you that can take it as comedy, but then when you see the damage that it does, there's a part of you that gets very angry that these people are pushing this bullshit, yeah. and they're they're hurting people that need something. To explain what they're going through, uh, we had one case where um, this this family thought they had something weird going on in their home. They called in a group to investigate. The group told them that they had seven demons in the house, no. and they were able to get rid of six of them. Good night, and left. So yes. this, this family panicked because they have one last demon that was too strong for this group to get rid of yeah. living in their bathroom. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we get yeah. the, we get to call at 3 a.m. of this sobbing person that doesn't know what to do. Now, that's when we get a little pissed off. Yes. Yeah. And Brian and I used our, our uh, common um, anger and fury at, at, at idiots in the world that push this bullshit to decide to kind of become a, uh, a, a men in black that are going to go out and go after these jackasses. That's awesome. See, I love that. That, that to me... Um... That that's the way it should be done. Too many people um, uh, want to uh, say yes. Uh, you know, the the place is haunted. The place is the which I joined a, a group, and I thought that's what I want to do. I want to help people. If there really is a ghost or there really is something there, I I want to help them. And uh, within two or three uh, outings, I noticed it was kind of like a group, a gang. It was like your own little group, and and it was more of a hangout. And it, it wasn't, uh, I mean, I got kicked out of it because I, I, we went and did an investigation and I spent the whole night there and I didn't see anything. And it was a girl, she was panicking about, there was a ghost in her basement and, uh, I, I, I couldn't find anything. And I, I called her the next day, uh, to, to let her know that I really don't think your place is haunted. It's, you know, it's an old house. It's your house is like fucking 110 years old, it's going to make these weird noises. I heard them. 
I didn't I didn't think there were ghosts. I just thought it was just an old house. Uh, in winter time, the wind would hit your house, and uh, I got kicked out of the group because I would I would call up people, letting them know that I really don't think it's a haunting, you know. And uh, once you put fear in people to say yes, it's a haunting. Uh, uh, listen, I've got a, a a psychic that could come out, uh, but you know he costs about you know for the night he'll cost about two hundred bucks. Nice. I hated that. I just thought bullshit. So so why do you why do you guys think they they uh, they left this poor family with one demon in their house? Like, do you think they actually believe that there was demons there, or, or, or what was the purpose of, of saying there's still one I, left? I think that's the problem. Is they did think that that was what was going on. Really. So because of that, they were just they didn't know what else to do. Yeah, uh, you had these people jump into conclusions, you know, because they want this world to be real, this yes. world of ghosts and demons. They want it to be real. So rather than looking for natural explanations, they're looking for demonic explanations. And, um, and and the thing is, is if you can make a family, I mean, this is not all about money. This is about ego, all ego. Yeah. Because if you can make a family terrified, what you then have is a family that needs to call you uh, to console them and to help them and to counsel them consistently that's creepy so you're getting these phone calls all the time from these people that are in panic and that's feeding your ego big that's... time and making you feel like yeah i'm a big time ghost hunter and i solve people's problems you know? yes but yes actually all you're doing is creating some pretty bad problems yeah and you're creating some psychological shit to the kids that grow up thinking they've been haunted you know um, oh, we've, yeah we've seen some bad stuff there yeah you... yeah we've we've got cases i mean that we've had to involve the police with that yeah. Ranging from just to physical abuse to psychological abuse to, and we've got a couple of them that have actually ended up in court that are just horrifying. Right. So, isn't it funny that you you okay, you get the police involved for something like that, and then and then you still hear about police old murder cases and stuff where the police get psychics involved? Like, this that's totally bizarre to me. Well, you know, the interesting thing about that is you'll always hear these well self-proclaimed psychics out there saying, I work with the police department all the time and we help solve cold cases. Well, we never know, neither one of us know how to say this right. So when we've worked with the police, but not in that capacity, yeah, not in that capacity, we basically have asked them, you know, hey, what happens if you have somebody call up and say, I'm a psychic and I know where the body is and you find the body. And they're like, well, that makes them a suspect. Sure. Right. That yes. doesn't make them a psychic. But right. at the same time, uh, I've talked to quite a few police uh, officers that say we'd really like to have a special hotline for all of the psychics to be able to call in and give tips. That way we could ignore that one and get to the people that are actually calling in with real tips. Okay. Right, right, right. Right, it, it, sort but, of, sort of, sort of divert the divert the bullshit away from useful information. So you've had uh, police call you guys uh, for not like a fuck, Sylvia Brown. You've you've uh, you've you've called to explain uh, to police. Tr- please don't you know believe these fucking uh, uh, people. Uh, this is what to look for. Well, you're kind of you're, you're you're sort of on the right track. What we've run into is we found out that we thought the police were going to be on our side, you know, because often when you're doing an investigation of a, of a family who believes they're being anally raped by demons every night. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> it's a dream that, of mine. You may be dealing actually with psychological issues. Yes. Or heavy drug use or things like that. So you want the police to be on your side. Yeah. And what you find out very quickly is the police find this whole thing to be a joke. Right. So we've been working with the police on a different level to train them to understand uh, that this is a, a very serious um, situation that they need to understand how to be a first responder to these kind of claims because there's usually something insidious underneath it, and that mm-hmm. isn't spiritual. It's usually it's usually some sort of domestic violence, right. uh, drug abuse, or psychological issues. And the police need to be able to put aside their own personal bias about the ghost side of things right. and learn to recognize the real problems. Wow. 
That's amazing. So, yeah, I don't know if Brian might be able to tell a little bit more about um, our, our progress in, in being able to work with the police on these things. Well, we're actually working on some training for, and it, we're going to say police, but basically all first responders. I mean, think of with the current huge interest in everything paranormal and everybody's you know, having their right to bandwagon and say they're either possessed or have a ghost or whatever it is, but they're actually having some sort of psychological or maybe abuse issues right. that, that are being blamed on this. So they call in a first responder, be it you know the police, the fire department, social services, anybody, or they get called in because of abuse and the family's using that as an excuse. Uh, these people have no idea how to react when they hear these claims, well, and they need to learn. Yeah, yeah. So, so some of them are probably just as afraid of the demons as the people in the house once they get there, or, or whatever the situation may be, which is kind of scary. Well, that can, that, yeah, that can certainly happen. Um, one of the, the the examples that we have is like we were saying about this family that was getting raped by demons on a nightly basis. Um, was it the uncle? Nine one one text. To, for us to get up there oh. as soon as possible. We tried to call, we tried to make some sort of contact with them to find out what was going on. And they were probably an hour away, an hour drive away. Oh, sure. And uh, we couldn't get a hold of them. So we felt that, you know, maybe what we ought to do is call the police to get over there and make sure everybody was safe and okay. Right. And the, the police showed up and said, yeah, this ghost hunting group from Denver called us to let uh, let us know that there's this crazy family that thinks they're being attacked by demons. Oh my. Oh. And uh, the family felt humiliated. They felt like they were having the cops called on them right. rather than to assist them. And uh, it, it really created a, a bad situation. And the cops missed all the cues. Right. Because there was heavy methamphetamine use in the house. Oh, man. And the cops were too busy laughing about the, 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 the ghost group calling up about some crazy family. Sure. And telling the family that we called them crazy, which we didn't. Right. Um, you know, and it, it really created a bad situation. And sure. they, they didn't do this just once. They did it three times. Holy shit. Uh, to the same family. And it was like, oh my God, I, and, I can't believe this. And but when, we, when... we've had several situations where the police just weren't getting it and they weren't taking anything seriously. Well, uh, they... And it's not that we want them to take the ghost hunting aspect seriously. We want them to take that there's a problem that needs to be looked at right. seriously. Right. They're, well, they're... that, and we also need them to understand if they're given, you know, let's say a paranormal group's gone into their home and told them they have demons and given them their evidence to prove that it's that way. Right. These first responders need to be able to look at this evidence and know what they're actually seeing, because they are just as likely to become convinced as the people in the house at that point. Right. right. Somebody, that's, that's true. Somebody shows Police up forces with... are surprisingly superstitious. And, yeah. and it's sad, because you're actually really trying to help, and um, I, I think the problem is when you're dealing with, and I, I've dealt with this, with people on drugs or... Uh, some type of psychological uh, problem, there's nothing you can do. It's like they switch on a dime. You could have a conversation with them, and you could say you could say one thing, and all of a sudden, they're like, uh, they, they take it totally wrong, and they think you're being, you know, I, I, you know, like they, they, they it's weird. Yeah. You, you, you can't, it's a no-win situation because you're dealing with somebody that just, you know, reality is sometimes not there for there's, them. There's no amount of reason that you can use that's going to change their mind because you keep hearing, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. yeah but. And then, then you try and help out and you say right. something and then they, they, what, what, do you, what do you mean that? I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm not, you know, and it's like, no, I didn't mean that, you know. Uh, that's not what I right, meant. Exactly. So it's, you, you're trying to help and you end up just walking away frustrated saying, well, that's not what, you know, what we're trying to do here. And, yeah, it's the right. worst. It's the worst feeling in the world. Uh, that's, that's... But then again, you're dealing with. Um, it's like arguing with. Uh, you know, my wife's like, how you know, uh, how can you be rational with an irrational person? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. Really, that's really cool that you guys. You can't, and that's another really important skill you need to have to be able to do this, even though it doesn't work all the time. Is being able to communicate with these people at their level. Right, right. Especially if they are true believers in whatever it is that they think is going on, and they have some sort of weird religious beliefs, not that all of them are, but yes, right. you need to be able to explain it to them at their level. And the, so the, that's the, something we've tried to tell people is, you know, a lot of these paranormal groups go in and do more damage yes. by bringing in their own belief systems. Yeah, and, and the only way I could... Uh, 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 like I've gone to a few of them and I've realized the only way I could go and, and have a, a decent conversation is if I go back in the car, snort about four lines of Coke, come back out, and uh, then we're both on the same page, you know. Um, I know that, 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 that might help. That, that, uh, yeah, well, well it'll, you'll end up at the wrong house. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I you know, that's what I love about what you guys do. You try and and I, I mean, uh, I I like how I mean I've gone out with uh, ghost hunters um, and they'll have their their uh, audio expert or their blah blah blah, and it turns out that this guy works at fucking you know Walmart and you know he's in the meat department, and it's like he's not an expert. Where you guys will have. You know, you'll have experts, you'll have video uh, guys that know the shit, uh, you'll have ling linguistic people that, that understand audio, uh, you have doctors at your disposal, or if you think of the person's unbalanced, you could have a, a doctor talk to them. I mean, that's stuff where, uh, and I've told people this, I said, you guys should, should, should do something where, uh, how, and I've mentioned this before how not to be a paranormal investigator you should do a video on how to be a paranormal investigator um yeah no i think mean, that's a it's a good idea um and and something that uh we we kind of do we we do talks uh, we give we give tours and we give talks uh one of the things we're going to be starting is these uh haunted dinners Yes. This uh, one restaurant where it's an all you can eat situation. You come in and then you listen to us yabber on for a while. And one of the, the main things that we talk about is how these things actually work. We talk about the tools we use, we talk about the approach, the mindset, and um, uh, we give examples from you know uh, certain case studies. And it's, it's really a lot of fun. Uh, we have a lot of fun with these people. And then. Uh, uh, we let them go off and do a little bit of a hunt themselves in this oh, that's supposedly cool. haunted restaurant, and we find out that everything we said didn't make a fucking bit of impact at all. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a good night. <laughs> right. So is the restaurant always haunted? Uh, restaurants are always haunted, and um, I would say any structure that's got four walls or, or less, really, is, is going to be haunted. If you think about it this way, there's not really a square inch on dry land where somebody hasn't died at right. some point in, in the history of the Earth. Right. So, yeah, it, it's a haunted planet, and, and uh, you can pretty much, you know, pin any place with a haunting. But you, you do the uh, the haunted Denver tours all the time, right? I mean, that that is something... Yes. Yeah, that's something where, uh, if you're ever in Denver... Uh, Check them out. They they seem like a, a hell of a lot of fun. Well, they are. I mean, our, we have a different approach, of course. Uh, our approach is we go there and we tell you the folklore. We tell you the story of what happened. And then we tell you the real story. We tell you about how badly history has been destroyed by the folklore. Right. And we tell you the real story, and, and you get to find out that the real story is often much more terrifying because of the the mental health issues behind what started the story in the first place and, right yeah. uh, the, the you know the, uh, the the crime and and uh, just crazy shit that goes on I mean we've got one place uh, the Crow Patterson mansion where people like to focus on oh there's this ghost of this woman that goes up and down the stairs well screw that what, what there really was was a, a crazy veterinarian who kept uh, frozen cats in his freezer right. while he abused his family 
And, uh, I mean, you know, uh, it, it was just a, a, a bizarre, yeah, and he, he believes he invented a flying car. And, oh, I mean, fuck, you know, you wow. know, stuff like that. That's true. This guy was an absolute, it is a whack job. Right. And uh, people want to hear about some floating lady coming down the stairs. Screw that. The, the true stories are better. Yes, they yeah. are. That, well, that... then we've kind of shown what the floating lady was. <laughs> yeah. So that's that kind of reminds me of, of uh, Amityville Horror. Just same deal there. Like the the movie took huge liberties with uh, the original one. I'm talking about huge liberties with with the actual situation, and, and they still say yes, it's it's based on a real story. But the real story was pretty fucking scary. Well, Brian and Baxter oh, yeah. did the uh, Stanley Hotel. Actually, it, Do you remember you guys did the, the, the fun thing. Sorry, go on. Oh, I had. Where you guys did the Stanley Hotel, where the Shining, the the the, and you guys showed that. Remember, they were saying something about there was certain minerals in the ground that was making people cuckoo, and you you tested yep. all that, and it showed that there was nothing there. This is just there, you know, and people don't want to hear that. Exactly, they don't, and it doesn't. Yeah, you know, and that's where we really have to find a balance of of what people will accept and and what people simply won't accept because of the fact that what we have to say is not as much fun right so we we work very hard to make uh what we say as fun as possible um you know whether we present ourselves as as uh you know court jesters or if we present ourselves as more of a pen and teller or a, a Jay and Silent Bob I mean whatever you guys if, remind if we me can of get people the, the... long enough we can actually you know, get them to believe. You guys remind me of, the, of of Columbo. <laughs> where where you guys people that? don't do people don't take you seriously like Columbo, and then halfway through right. it, they realize that you guys are the smartest fucking guys in the room, <laughs> and they're screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I used to love Columbo, and I really worked on that whole lazy eye thing. Because... <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, what's uh, what do you guys what do you guys make of do you, do you guys are involved in in uh, investigating uh, conspiracy theories and that too a bit right? Yes, what, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a different kind of wacky, isn't it? I mean, the, the demons is one thing, and and you can kind of see why uh, that sort of propagates itself with movies and and, and religion and stuff. But I mean, vapor trail it's the, poisoning. It's the exact kind of wacky. It's the, exact same thing it's just uh it, it, you're just plugging in different phrases is all you're doing okay. you know you can say this house is haunted because you know blah 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 and i'm it's, it's all why they believe it is is what's the same yeah you different phrases and different perspectives but it's why they believe it right and so, people believe in conspiracy theories because they feel like they've got the inside information they feel like they're special they feel like uh it changes the world they live in it changes the world to be one of um, mystery and one of, uh, you know, because if there's all these conspiracies, then it means that there's also all these uh, other things that are being covered up, that if they can uncover them, you know, uh, you know, fairies and Bigfoot and all that are suddenly going to appear as well. Right. Um, so it's, it's really kind of the people that believe in ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, and conspiracy theories all have the same fucking uh, same four brain cells that they're sharing uh, <laughs> <laughs> across the board. Well, do you... um, but uh, it's, so it's an interesting thing that we watch it all the time. Now, the difference is both ghost hunters are largely harmless in their, um, when you, when you confront them, you know, their reactions. Yeah. Okay. UFO people are, basically you. Cons they're Re conspiracy mm -hmm. theorists. Really? So UFO people and the regular government conspiracy theorists are in the same camp when it comes to danger because they usually have some sort of compound with a whole stock load of uh, weapons. Right, right. Because, and because they're ready a, to come after you. So, I mean, when we went after some UFO people, believe me, it was frightening what, right. what we were, you know, getting back from them. Oh, I could imagine. So, that, would can, be, that would be like going up against the early uh, 80s Scientologists. You can, you can shoot an alien, but you can't shoot a ghost. True. Well, yeah, you got the like you got you got the uh, I I can see that where the guys are a little more you know fucked in the head, 
Um, um, did you ever run into this, uh, guys, where I know you guys uh, also have, have uh, been in a few movies or uh, where you've gone on investigations where when I had to do the show, I had to come, you know, I had a budget and I had to go to uh, hotels. You see, the whole point of what I wanted to do is go to a real haunted location. And when I would go to a haunted location, they would tell me, okay, just say I had to do the museum in Toronto, which was haunted. The guy wanted five grand a day to shoot there for a three-day shoot, okay? Which I told him, yeah. I, I don't have that type of money, okay? And then he goes, okay, well, uh, what are you going to say? And I'm going to say the place is haunted. And he's like, that's exactly what I want to hear. And I had to show him a script to show what, what I'm going to do. And it went from 5000 a day to $300 a day. So uh, half these guys that own these places, like there was a Niagara Falls uh, uh, haunted lo location, they wanted to hear from me. If I do a show there, it has to be haunted. It cannot be... Uh, 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 there has to be a ghost here, guys. Because if there isn't a ghost, you guys are, are not welcome. Right. Yep. The, the ghost, ghost uh, <clears throat> the S in ghost is actually a dollar sign. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Nice. And that, that's basically it, because the, when we did our last investigation of the Stanley Hotel before we were banned from ever coming back, um, it was amazing the number of people there that were not just there to stay in the hotel because it's in beautiful Estes Park and it's gorgeous and it's a historic location. All of the people that were staying there were ghost hunters. Right. right. They were out wandering the halls in their pajamas at all hours taking pictures of orbs. <laughs> and uh, they were, and they would constantly come to us because once they found out that there were real ghost hunters in the building, they would come to us and there was a line uh, that were with people with their cameras wanting to show us their orb pictures. Right. Wow. Um, these, these hotels, yeah, these I got to spend an a ton of money. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I got to spend an entire night basically sitting down with people explaining, well, basic photography to them. Right. Wow. And but we, I think for what, probably three or four hours, we were just giving tours of the building. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had to put our investigation to the side and just educate people. And, and that's that what I like what you guys do. These people thought that there was the, this, this odd smell of a, a cigar smoke. So what, and uh, Brian and I, we have very keen senses when it comes to this, very trained keen senses when it comes to this. And we were able to discern almost immediately that it was a bacon cheeseburger wow. and not cigar smoke. <laughs> um, and we tracked down uh, to the guy that had a... Um, they had a, had a hot plate, plate. Or, had a hot plate <laughs> in his hotel room, and he was making cheeseburgers. But uh, and it was, it's that skill that we've developed that we can we can right. pinpoint a cheeseburger very quickly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I now, do you guys but, get? Uh, but, so was there a long line of dejected uh, uh, hotel patrons leaving the, the next day at checkout time? No, like, I think they, people were they get all sad angry. that they they had their bubbles burst. Do, do you notice people get whatever, angry? Whatever we said that went in line with their belief system, they grabbed onto and thought we were geniuses. Right. Whatever we said that didn't go in line with what they believed, they suddenly didn't hear. Right. Right. So, of course. So, but know, do you do you get people remain. do you get people where they get angry where they go, "No, no, you 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 don't understand. There's a ghost here, pal. You don't get it. This place kind is of, haunted." Yeah. It's it's the it's the the, the beautiful old gem of I know what I saw. Right. I know what I experienced. You can say what you want. I don't care. I was there. Right. And and you, there's really no argument for that other than you're a whack job and you probably ought to talk to somebody. Well, about it's it. it's like the the Bigfoot people where they go, I saw a Bigfoot. Uh, you know, he's standing there. We're staring at each other with love in our eyes, and he he <laughs> he walks across, and in three steps he's gone. He's into the bush, and I'm thinking. Fuck, dude! Everyone's got a camera on the end of their penises these days. How can you not get a picture of that? Like, uh, and you talk to these people, and you get guys like that money maker guy that will just sit there. And before you even speak, 
before you even speak, will say, I believe that was a Bigfoot. You know, uh, and, and all that does is how, how many times I, I've done this where I thought I've seen something and then without within a week or two, I realized, oh, fuck, no, it was the light. It was this. It was that. I didn't have 15 people tell me, uh, dude, you saw a ghost. That was a ghost you saw. No, you, 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 right. if you just sit back and look at what, what happened, um, fuck, I, I would have, uh, uh, who was it last time we talked to where he, he the, the, what he said was, I would have to have a ghost materialize in front of me and have a conversation uh, uh, to believe in it. Right. So I, I think that you're, you, you know, you're dealing with, we're dealing with a time where there are so many ghost shows out there, so many, you know, the Bigfoot files, so many, people want to believe in this shit, no matter what you tell them, uh, no matter uh, 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 what you say to them, they're going to believe what they want to believe because in their little gang, if you don't believe, you get kicked out of the gang and what's the point of hanging out? It's fun hanging out with a bunch of ghosting, uh, Hunters sitting around and talking about <coughs> um, ghosts and and hey, you know what place we got to go to this cemetery and we got to go here and we got to go here and well, that's and, and it's that's, like a gang. Right, it's it's fun. That's great, but it's like like we said before. As soon as somebody uh, gets uh, uh, injured or or, or uh, has something detrimental happen to them because of that, it pisses people off. I mean, it pisses me off. It's awful. Well, it got I'm to taking the po- advantage of yeah. Well, the only reason I was there was there was this broad I wanted to fuck. And she was gorgeous. And I just kept saying to myself, you know, you can't keep doing this. You know, the only way you're going to get laid is you got to believe in this shit. You know? And I, I just, I, I couldn't do it anymore. I just, I just could not do it anymore. What, what do you, do you guys uh, ever look into uh, uh, healing or, or holistic medicine or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and before we touch on that, I do want to go back to what Vito was saying. And um, basically, what what we, we try to do, you know, when you, when you look at the word skepticism, you've got the movement of skepticism that's, you know, uh, sort of headed up by James Randi and Michael Shermer and people like this. Um, but what they're doing is not skepticism. What they're doing is cynicism. And it's, it's a different right. thing, but they call it skepticism. So what we try to do is actual skepticism and that's ghosts may exist they might but we need to see proof right right um and and we try really hard not to be cynics but it's it's difficult i admit it <laughs> we often walk into places going oh jesus fucking christ this is this is stupid you know why are we doing this but the the reality is is we we need to keep that skepticism alive where we're going this place could be haunted let's find out right. the truth Right. And, and leave it at that. Rather than let's prove to these idiots that it's not haunted, we need to go with the attitude of let's find out the truth. And, and, and that, right. makes, um, that makes oh. makes your findings a little bit more legitimate in that sense. Uh, not saying that James Randi is not legitimate, but uh, when you go in with an open mind, then, you you know, at least from, from all appearances, you're you're not biased. And w- Exactly. And w- exactly. You nailed it. What's great with you two, what's, what's great with you guys is at least you have somebody to bounce your ideas off that isn't going to, um, you know, that, that you guys are kind of on the same page. Uh, you're, you're not sitting there going, am I the only one that thinks this is fucking uh, uh, wrong or am I the only one? At least you could sit there and, 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 and have a conversation. And, and the way you guys attack things, you, you attack it through a scientific way. It's not uh, you put feelings and emotions aside and you go at it scientifically. Yeah, and that's what yeah. that's what so, what's missing in in oh, in these sorry. shows. If you watch any of these ghost hunting shows, all it is is emotion. Nothing scientific. True, true. That's well, true. you have to realize that uh, you know we haven't brought it up in a long time, but Program Films that did Ghost Hunters or does Ghost Hunters, their big hit to start with was. Uh, uh, what was it called? American Chopper. Oh, right. And it wasn't it, it wasn't the fact that you were watching them build motorcycles. Nobody cared. Right. It was the fact that they were fighting with each other all the time. Everybody wanted to see who was going to fight with who the next right. week. Right. It gave, it gave, and that's what the whole Ghost Hunters thing was based off of, was 
what kind of controversy can we start between these people and start a good argument? Right. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, we I, the, the drama. The la- yeah, drama. The and last that's, show, that's why, the last show I watched if you on. Look at the, the fine print on those shows. The fine print on the disclaimer. It will say that it is a docu soap. Mm. Yes. Otherwise known as a scripted television show. Right. Yes. It's not. A re- it's not. You know, just a, a an ad lib. They turn on the cameras and see what happens. Right. Um, you know, we we talked with those guys. We know Jason and Brian. And, I've been uh, on the show. Right. Yeah, Brian's been on the show. We know the truth behind it. Um, so yeah, it's it's absolutely all about the drama, man. How, how is you going to get a biker cool. dude to watch a soap opera? Well, I remember I told you that last night that it's scripted. They have to show that and really, really quick. And that's when you did the how not to be a paranormal investigator. I did not know that when you, you uh, said that, uh, you and James Randi, and it was, uh, uh, who else was on the panel? But they, they were all guys that you've seen on television before, and they say that at the end of the show. Uh, they say this is scripted. Now, why? Now, I've tried to pitch shows, and what places want... They don't want you bumbling around, but they want to know, okay, you're doing 12 episodes. Yes, I'm doing 12 episodes. Okay, uh, about what? Uh, ghost hunting. Okay, uh, what do you guys do? Okay, we is there a story? Like, they need a story. They need a script. They they, they don't want you just walking around like a, a you know, in the bumbling around in a basement. So, before any network agrees to anything you do, they want to know, do I have 12 episodes and... Are, are, they have to be scripted, right. guys. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, oh yeah, I was uh, was going to ask you about about the uh, the bullshit medicine. What what have you guys done with that? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Oh, we've taken on a ton of it. Um, everything ranging from I don't know bizarre medical devices that claim to cure everything from autism to cancer to healers that more or less claim that they can heal just by looking at you. <laughs> and by the way, there's a new one of those out. Um, it's now called quantum gazing. Quantum gazing. So quantum was, gazing. Was Deepak Chopra quantum involved? Quantum gazing. Quantum gazing. What was that? Is is that a, D, yep. a Deepak Chopra uh, number? It sounds like something he would say. Uh, actually, this is a whole new bizarre. I can't even begin to explain how stupid it is. Type of thing. Quantum gazing. Wow. You could make up fucking well, anything. Yeah, you know, quantum quantum in the in this this alternative medicine world is almost like in the, in the medical world when you go to uh, the, the the pharmacy and you want to buy. Um, you know, some aspirin. You can get regular strength or you can get extra strength. Now, quantum is the same thing as extra strength when <laughs> it comes to, uh, you know, the, the alternative medicine world. So if you do quantum gazing, you've got extra strength anison or whatever. What the fuck um, is gazing? True. So it's kind of funny how they, they're, they're appropriating words. And you want to go back to this princess side where... The one guy says, you keep using that word. I don't think, <laughs> I you, don't know think you know what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing is, the, My favorite the movie. whole weird metaphysical world has stolen so many <laughs> uh, mostly scientific words and destroyed them. And, well, that's uh, a Deepak Chopra move, right? We'll take our words back. Yeah, but that, if you watch a Deepak Chopra, he, he uses big words and then he puts... Poetic, like poems to them, and we'll, uh, quantum consciousness. Yeah, and then uh, you you are not the the drop; you are the drop in the ocean. And you're like, wow, that sounded cool, but at, and then you're going, well, that's fucking bullshit. Well, people want and people want to believe it. What about this uh, woman who was uh, given, I think, it was bleach enemas to cure autism? She, she had to move to Mexico because they weren't letting her do it in the states anymore. That uh, right, right. The, yeah, child abuse seems to be legal in the U.S. I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Yeah. Do you guys notice, I mean, do you ever watch old westerns um, and there's always some guy trying to sell snake oil? And you're thinking, how stupid were they back then where a guy would show up and say, this will cure your grandmother's uh, vagina and this will do this and blah, 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 blah. And then you realize, fuck, we have not, uh, uh, you know, we're in the same. Yeah, we, we were, we're the same. No, it hasn't changed at all. Yeah, we're Neanderthals. Yeah, we're still fucking walking around like dope yeah. saying... Yes, there's there must be an easier way. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. The snake oil salesman brought hope to very desperate people, and right. they prey on that. And that's exactly what is going on today. Um, we've got one. We've dubbed it the disco coffin, but it's uh, what is it? The life vessel. Yep. And it's basically a box, a pine box that you crawl into that has some lights on the inside that flash and stuff like that. And it's supposed to cure everything wow, under right. the sun. And right. there's desperate parents bringing their horribly disfigured children Jesus. and horribly ill, sick children to lay in this fucking disco coffin for a half an hour. Yeah. At the cost of thousands of dollars. Yeah. And, that's... It's, and, and they act like, oh, no, we're doing good things. No, you're not. You're preying on the desperate. It's, it's when you trade real medicine for the nonsense medicine, especially when it comes to kids, that it's just awful. Like, you know, but like people think uh, James Randi is a cold individual, and you watch him talk about these stories of how he would go to town to town to go after these, these preachers, like a pop-off or whatever, and he would see yeah. a child in his crutches with their mother... And the boy would, you know, would you know, the little boy would just sit there and go, Mom, you know, this is like the seventh uh, show we've been to, and and uh, you know, hopefully he'll 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 uh, help us the next show. And there's Randy with tears rolling down his eyes, explaining the story how fucking disgusting that is to do that to people. Yeah. And and you realize he's not the coldest person. He is the guy with the biggest heart out there. Uh, that that oh, yeah. that cares that that wants this this stupid nonsense bullshit to go away. Um, to, you know the, these are parasites, vultures, uh, and and uh, how people don't see it, it, it boggles my mind. Where I just sit there and go, how can you not? If something smells like shit and looks like shit, it's shit, boys and girls. Yeah. Okay, it's desperate. Mm-hmm. And and uh, uh, well, that's the thing. Is they they perfume it enough for for uh, you know people that uh, you know. I I don't I don't know how to say it. I mean, if you've seen the uh, uh, what is it, Walk Hard, the the Dewey Cox <laughs> story, you know, yeah, how he went smell blind, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think a lot of these people are smell blind to the shit, mm. right? Well, you get fed enough of this stuff, you're you're gonna believe it. I mean, if if you if you're brought up, it's that old, you know. Uh, it's to me, I, I see it. If you're brought up a Muslim, the most likely you're probably gonna be a Muslim. If you're brought up Catholic, you're most likely gonna be Catholic. But if uh, um, the beauty of YouTube and what you guys do is, kids or anybody will go out there. I mean, there's always something where you watch, and I've always been. Uh, you know, for me, my favorite character in the Bible was Doubting Thomas, you know? So I've always uh-huh. thought, I always thought, well, let me hear what the other person has to say. And when I clicked on you guys, and you guys aren't mean, you're not throwing shit, you're not calling people stupid, you're, you're, uh, I mean, it, it, my YouTube channel would just be like, you guys are all fucking mentally challenged, you know? But you, <laughs> you guys take your time and you try and show... Uh, nicely, uh, respectfully, uh, that this is this is how we do it, and you could believe it or not. And at the end of the day, I could sit there and, and, and uh, at the end of the day, if you guys put that doubt in me, where I just say, "Well, that wasn't a ghost, or that wasn't a Bigfoot, or you know that that really didn't, uh, you know the that that psychic uh, powers." You know what, uh, Brian and Baxter were right. Right. You know, and if they they give me that that if you just give me that little bit of doubt, that doubt will go a long way and will fester and fester and and within a couple of it's months, it's human nature. It's human nature where you're going. You know what? I didn't like those guys. Like before, I never liked James Randi. I never liked uh, uh, Christopher Hitchens. I thought, what an arrogant man. But if you sat and listened to him, within ten minutes, you realize, holy shit, he's right. <laughs> you know. Right. So, so it's, it, it, yeah. it, it, you, you, you know, it's, it's you guys putting in the, the, the seeds of opening up your mind. That's something uh, that, uh, uh, you know, people, you know, I, I, I applaud you for that. That's something that I love that. I, you know, I it, love. It must be hard 
uh, I mean, obviously to 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 not want to kill somebody in your position a lot of times. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you just don't get on the phone and go, "Are you fucking stupid? Are you a complete <laughs> moron?" We we don't know either. We're not quite yeah. sure how how we managed to keep it together. But you know, I have to say, with what you were saying, you were talking about how you know getting that that idea in there and letting it fester. Yeah. Um, you're you're kind of making me think that we are the gangrene on the lake of. Uh. Yeah, no, you guys, you guys are the cure. You're not the gangrene. The person had the gangrene. You guys are the fucking cure, you know? So, and that's great because at the end of the day, I'll walk away and what I, I've always enjoyed is you've taken the time and I, I, I mean, uh, um, where if, if, even if I have a question, something ridiculous, I'll try and freak him out and if I see something weird, I'll immediately uh, send it to... Uh, um, Matthew and and he he'll go oh, yeah I've seen it and he'll explain to me why you know it is that way you know right. and I'll just sit there and go holy shit that see that would have taken me about three days to get back and he just he just he he actually took his time and explained it to him and to me that's a person with passion that that it's just obvious it's it, you obvious, know that yeah. that that wants to show you that hey you know what um i've read every you know i've read uh i've i've, I've done it i've been, there's a reason why i'm on these shows you right. know there's a reason why uh uh, uh a and e or cnn will want interviews with these guys because you know at the end of the day they're, they're 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 right they're opening up your eyes and at the end of it you'll walk away uh i mean i used to be scared walking around uh cemeteries and now i i think they are the nicest walks uh you know they they just they don't i don't get free i still get freaked out at scary movies because that's just the way i am but i'm not as um skittish or i don't i don't believe uh everything you see do you guys think in general that it's getting better or worse from that from that point of view like do you think uh do you think the movies and all that stuff is making it worse or, or are people getting better it goes in waves yeah, uh, yeah I, I think that, that overall, it doesn't change ever. Really? I think overall, it, it, that people, um, you know, there was a, a way, a kind of a, a back and forth between UFO belief popularity and ghost belief popularity. Mm -hmm. uh, whichever one was bigger, the other one would be down, and then they would trade places. And, you know, pretty, pretty soon all the documentaries or all the TV shows are about UFOs, and then that fades away and then you know for you know 10 15 years it's all about ghosts and then that fades away and then we get maybe a little bit of bigfoot thrown in there and then that fades away right. uh, but it all it all cycles it all comes back and it never changes right and that's okay you know that's okay that we have this sense of wonder in in our humanity right you know that that we continue to to look to these things and we want these things to be true because it, it is fun and it's exciting so what we have to concentrate on is the individual cases. Right. We have to concentrate on, you know, can we help the people that are being hurt by this? Because a lot of people are having a great time, and it's enhancing their experience of life. They're having a, a really great time with it. But the people that are getting hurt, those are the ones that we try to to help, and it's it's on a one on one basis. And um, that's so cool. That's that's, that's that's all we can do. That is so. Um, what's the word? Fuck. I, I was just I was just thinking that it's 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 uh, the way that they approach it is is not really telling people what to think but how to think about their situation. So, right. So they're not it's like, no, you're wrong. This is why. It's 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 like you said, putting that seed of doubt in their minds and letting them come to their own conclusions. Well, I think that's I, awesome. You, well, what I like is I, I I join a lot of paranormal groups and they kick me off within about a week or so. Um, mm. w what they'll do is they'll it's you don't pay. They'll say. They'll say, uh, uh, anybody have a problem with a ghost in their house, I can uh, come and cure that. And then I'll reply saying, how much do you charge? And then I'm kicked off. Right. You know? Uh, so there, there's always like this this kind of, yeah, yeah, I can help you out, but I need, you know, to make a bit of money doing this. Which I just, hey, I understand you got to make a living, but the way you make a living, I don't like it. Well, it's, it's interesting because in America... There's, there's not very many groups charging for this, which makes it really difficult for us because right. it's easy for them to hop on, people to hop on Facebook, to hop on, you know, it used to be MySpace. 
was the big one. But people just hop on and they Google their area and a you know and paranormal, and they come up with fifteen to forty groups that are willing to come to their house for free right. and tell them lies. Right. And that makes it hard for us to compete to get in there and to be able to help people when there's just so much garbage uh, floating out there for people to Google. I suppose um, it, but you know, it's, I don't it's, know, it's a really difficult well, thing. It's what you guys pay. You know, you could always say, uh, you know, and I believe you pay for what you get. So, um, if they want to hear from, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, purple vagina ghost hunter guy group that started in Boise, Idaho, or do you do you want the guys that have been on, you know, actual TV on CNN, on do you, you know what I mean? Do you, do you want guys? Like, you, you pay for what you get, okay? So, yeah. do, do well, you yeah, want guys sure, with credentials, well, you know, or you want uh, guys that I just started it up in their up. basement? Um, who I kind of consider a little bit a nemesis, and that's Ben Radford. He uh, has a real problem with not being able to take things on a case-by-case basis. Right. Um, he gets a full generalizing of everything. Yeah, he, he figures that he goes into one house and discovers that it's not haunted using decent technique. But then from that, he says, I have solved all haunting cases. Right. Okay. And no, Bonehead, you haven't. Right. You take things on a case-by-case basis. You know, I have solved the Chupacabra case. Well, there's no such thing as the Chupacabra case. (laughs) There's Chupacabra cases throughout history, and you did not solve them all. Right. You you fucking bald motherfucker. (laughs) Yeah, you may have have explained one kind of. Right. Yeah. You know, and he and I went round and round on his book, Scientific Paranormal Research, uh, he sent me a chapter of it, and he thought he was really going to get me. Right. You know that he was really going to be putting me down because he doesn't believe in the use of tools such as uh, cameras, such as uh, EMF detectors, such as right. thermometers. He science. Doesn't believe he doesn't believe in that. science. And we went back and forth. I don't know how many emails with me explaining to him in simple terms why using tools is valuable. And, and you're not going to catch a ghost from, from using tools. Right. But what you are going to do is discover why the people think they're seeing what they're thinking. And then you can use those tools to show them. But he, he's, he'd be like, well, yeah, I can see what you're saying. But he went ahead and published his book, Talking Shit, anyway. Right. Um, the, the guy just, you know, he is a classic cynic who does not want to do the work right. of taking things on a case-by-case basis. He wants to do it once and then tell everybody that he's changed the world. And that's, that's ignorance. That's stupidity. Right. It's not ignorance. It's stupidity. Yeah. And um, I, don't, I don't like that approach. I don't appreciate that approach. Well, it's not I a, think it's, that we all need to take things on a case-by-case basis. It's, it's not a scientific approach at all. Right. Uh, if, if the guys that are out there think they're actually finding ghosts are using that equipment, then you, by default, almost have to use the same thing. You know and what? you have to be proficient with that equipment. we got to shoot a show, get him, and we'll, we'll totally pitch this to the network, and he'll probably get picked up. Uh, 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 get that guy to show up, him and the ghost hunter, Zach, and we'll get uh, Amy Allen from The Dead Files. We'll get him in a basement and just beat the shit out of him. Wow. That's eh? a show. <laughs> Then you got a show, and then yeah, you know, you know, and then we just in our too. we just sit there and go to Amy. Go, did you see that coming? You fucking bitch! Did you see that coming? And then the, the Zach, I'll hit him with a bat and just go, "Hey, well, how, does the steroids make you deaf? Huh?" You know, if it makes you feel any better, do you know? Do you know uh, where she lives and what she actually does for a living? Who, Amy Allen? Yeah. No, I don't. Um, this is gonna be worth it, right? Yeah, she lives in Denver, and uh, she's a massage. She's a massage therapist. Nice. Of course, they are. Wow. Like, so. is she like a massage therapist or a massage therapist? What's the What's the ending like? <laughs> um, let's just say that there's no way in anything she ever does that there would be a happy ending. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I. She made me so furious one day. I called Mark furious, and. And I said to him, I go, I watched this show, this, this, uh, um, The Dead Files, where a family is sitting there, um, with their little kid, and Amy Allen comes in, 
and starts explaining that this is the fifth ring of hell. You guys are in serious trouble. You And the family knew nothing of this, and you could see the fear in this right. child's face. And I thought, you are a disgusting yep. cow to do that to people, yes. to, to freak them out like that. You, you're a, you're filth. Yep, absolutely. So, That's and I'm exactly just surprised, I'm, I'm just surprised. I'm just surprised. for every time somebody said that to me. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm just surprised they put that on when i rather see you guys going to, uh, you know, uh, you, you, what was it, what was the place called you guys went to? I think you guys shot a movie there. Um, it was the Castle Project, uh, a beautiful location. Oh, yeah. I, I would love yep. to see you guys, ex, you know, uh, 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 go room to room, explain the history of the place. That to me is more interesting, and and telling me facts about the place. Uh, I I I don't need to know that the devil is uh, trying to fuck in the ass. You know, I I I, I don't right. I don't believe that. You know, I I, I that was a different investigation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that house in particular that you're talking about is the Quote Patterson Mansion. Um, it is on our tour, and it is you know we we felt that we were horribly misrepresented in um, that, that documentary that you're talking about. but uh, Wait, Which one, um, yeah, the castle? Yeah, we, we, could, we could take you room to room and tell you uh, the realities of the place, and it would be far more interesting, far right. more fun. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that, what, what didn't you like what they did? Were you talking about the castle uh, project? The, the castle project, yeah. What did well, they... The what did, what they did, kind of presented us as skeptical believers... Okay. And um, I'm, I'm, we don't believe any of the bullshit talked about that in that house. Don't, don't present us as skeptical believers. And, and it seemed like they took some things out of context that we said to make it seem like we were reinforcing right. some of the, the statements about the place. Now, did and, you? Uh, no, we weren't. We weren't. We, you know, we had our own stories to tell about the place, but they certainly um, weren't in line with the folklore. And now, did you sign off on it? Oh well, they they don't show you the place. The, they don't show you the the final cut before you sign. Right. You have to sign right. before they start filming. And that's talent we've actually been able to improve quite a bit over the years. Is being able to make sure whatever it is that we say can't be spun too far. Right. Right. Yeah, I've learned I've learned my lesson the hard way. I've said things on newscasts uh, where I've accidentally compared uh, the second coming of Christ to right. bridge trolls. Right. And uh, <laughs> that's true. That didn't come out so well. But uh, so yeah, I we thought it was started. hilarious. <laughs> I, well, I did too. When I saw the newscast. I didn't think they were going to put that on the air. Um, and then you know there was another one where I offhandedly mentioned that I wished that the guy that was claiming. Um, that UFOs and aliens were real. I wish that the aliens would come and abduct him. Right. And uh, I didn't. Re- I didn't realize the camera was running. And of course, that was on the newsreel. God, that's uh, one of my moves. Oh, geez. Hmm. That yeah, so, that's one know, of my yeah, moves. You know, we, we have learned the hard way how to talk to yeah. the press. So we, you know, from your perspective watching that, we probably came off looking okay. But from right. our perspective watching it, we know where they made the cuts. Right. And right. we know where they, you know, were positioning us to look slightly different than we presented ourselves. I think I, so um, luckily we didn't give them much to work with. I, I know from my point of view, a lot of times when I'm watching a show like that, and then they, they you can you can tell the show is pushing for the supernatural to be real. And they, they the show itself wants it, you know, to come across as uh, this is a real legitimate thing. But when you see, the, and then they present, you know, arguments from guys like yourself uh, to make their own argument look more, more uh, legitimate, they, they they present an opposing view, and and edit it. And I think, uh, I think a lot of people are, or, or a lot of people can tell uh, when they show these people that are presenting the opposing view that they don't believe the bullshit. Um, but they edit it, like you said, in a, in such a way that it sort of makes it even more legitimate uh, the nonsense. Um, and yeah. sort of use it against you. There's nothing you can do. If there's a producer, and it's happened to me, they made me look like uh, I was this evil uh, comic that uh, made fun of the person that didn't win in this competition. And they had to stop airing it. Uh, because the way... I mean, they... they uh, 
I, I quite jokingly I said, um, you know, how how do you wish you, your other competitors uh, do? And I got along great with the other competitors, but they know I'm sarcastic, and and uh, I just said, uh, I, you know, I wish them all ass cancer. And all of a sudden, <laughs> that was on there, and it had me as the most people just hated me and i just thought you piece of shit you 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 put that in and that was a joke and they just made me uh that's why when i whenever any of these project whenever i sign off i tell the guy I go if you make me look like uh what i'm not i'll find you you know like that's just not cool you you, you can't do that and anybody if they have an agenda if they want to make you look stupid they can i mean they 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 really can uh uh, 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 anything they want to do, there, there's nothing you can do. You just gotta. At, at one point, you gotta trust the person, and it, it's hurtful when you trust them and they give you this shit back. Yep, absolutely. And it's 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 uh, the name of the game when it comes to to you know uh, you know the visual entertainment area. You know, it's if there, if something goes on uh, camera. They're going to use it to give as many ratings as they can off of it. They want outrage. They want drama. They want, you know, they want comedy. They want all this stuff. And if they don't get it the way they want it, they will manufacture it. They, you'll they, be the victim. They want that uh, I gotcha moment. I gotcha. Yep. Like, uh, yep. Which, which to me is just uh, whatever. I mean, uh, oh, yeah, and I totally forgot. Uh, um Matthew Baxter just had a, a baby boy. I forgot to... Yay! Yay! Congratulations. As we say up here, you got one past the goalie. Um, well done. Uh, well, thank uh, you. And, and is, do you mind if I say... Uh, do you, can you give us his name? His name is Blade Baxter. Blade Baxter. Nice. Eh? Nobody's going to pick on that kid. No. No, not at all. That's my intention. Awesome. <laughs> But that as congratulations. Yeah, cool kid, but yeah, I'm working on very little sleep because of this success. Oh, I could imagine. Uh, that's great. Uh, I saw Pex on him. He's a uh, beautiful baby boy, and uh, uh, mom's doing well. Um, that's great. It's recovering. Recovering. Uh, they'll be recovering for about the next 26, 27 years. Yeah, something like that. And. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh that's great you know it, it would be awesome to have you guys as uh i always thought uh it'd be cool to have you as you know dad and uncle uh would be the coolest <laughs> the coolest could you imagine having these two as your your dad and uncle yeah nobody's gonna sneak anything past you no no i mean it would just it would just be like uh uh especially him going to uh uh uh, Brian's, uh, you know, little museum, and going. What, what, what did you do with the steak? Where, where's the steaks? Mm -hmm. Where, where the fuck are the knives? Where's the poison? <laughs> what did you do with it? You know, I mean, it, it would, it would, it, it would be absolutely uh, awesome. Oh, yeah, it would be fun. It and it's going to be fun. I'm trying to think of what a good title would be. Oh, you guys got to do. I, you know what you guys should do. And I, I don't sound a, sound like a, well, I am an idiot. But what you guys should do is have a guy just shoot you guys, not like with a gun, but with a camera, follow you guys around, and just do a little documentary of what you guys go through, um, uh, you know, like the, the behind-the-scenes things. Just the cop training alone. Would yeah, be like awesome. just stuff like that. You watching an episode of uh, A Haunting would be... I, I'd pay money just to see you guys watch an episode. It'd be like uh, uh, Mystery Theater 3000 just watching you two talk about what's going on. Um, you guys got to do stuff yeah. like that. Um, well, believe it or not, we actually are being followed around by... Uh, a camera crew. We do have a documentary being made. Yeah, we um, we call that the so FBI we, here. We, don't, we have we have no idea how it's going to turn out. We have really very little input uh, <laughs> into what the guy's doing. He he's just he's just documenting us. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, we don't know what it's going to turn out to be, but it'll be interesting. Yeah, please let me know when that's out because that yeah, that that is going to be uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, you you guys got to do that because I've always, whenever I watch you guys, I always think, I wonder 
what it would be like if they were in this situation mm -hmm. or if they were doing this or I want, you know, it, that to me I find interesting, you know. Um, okay, uh, that, that's a great idea. You, you bring up a great point, Vito. Um, you and, uh, and, and any of your, your listeners, um, I, I don't know if you have any listeners or not. Well, we got about, we got three, <laughs> my mom. Put, put out the words to, to send to you, to send to me, um, situations that you would like the documentary uh, maker to capture. Uh, uh, and, and we'll make it happen. Cool. What I would love to see is you and Brian just sitting at a table talking about getting ready to go to investigation and and behind the scenes when somebody comes to you and talks and then you two get together and talk about how we're going to tackle this, what do we think, uh, stuff like that. I find that more interesting. And then you getting a phone call, uh, you know, uh, Blade's got a shitty diaper. You need to fix that while you're working on, you know, uh, you know, it's just stuff like that. I always find that how a person could juggle uh, and you're always busy. You've, 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 you you're, you're always, uh, out and about. So is this, um, is this your first son? Your first baby? No, no he's got I, four I actually, in, he's uh, got about four in Puerto Rico. 21 years old. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. So I yeah, he's starting all over. He, he wants to see, he's got hair. Yeah. And he, he didn't lose it. So he yeah. wants to lose it now. I was going to say, you might start believing in demons once you change those diapers, but. You've done that already. Yeah. So. They do act like I remember my son. Um, just it was like uh, uh, all of a sudden it's like dealing with uh, uh, fucking Aerosmith and and The Exorcist. He just comes into the room, just ah, blah, 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 and just leaves. You know, and you're going, what the fuck was that? Yeah. You know. Tasmanian devil. So it, it well, was, my my first one, we've been pretty lucky. He's actually. Um, gone on quite a few investigations with us since he was oh uh, I, I think he started around 14 15 yeah. um he started going on investigations with us and and uh he's had a, a bizarrely keen eye on uh, catching a lot of interesting things from the video footage um catching uh, uh inconsistencies in in a ufo abductees uh story um and you know, and, and it's I think it's great. That's awesome. You've got this this UFO abductee that thinks he's really smart and thinks he's got his story put together well, and then a fifteen year old catches everything he's saying wrong. Right. I really enjoy that. That's well, you know, feel good. I you know why? I think it's because he's got the fresh eyes. He's got he's got eyes that will pick up these things. Where right now, like I see dots. You know, mm -hmm. you got the little squiggly lines. You should see him. He's grabbing at, at straws, like in the air right yeah. now. Yeah, so weird. he's got the fresh eyes. Once you get the 40-year-old eyes, you're you're not as sharp. Uh, and I think it, uh, we've been polluted by so much shit out there that he has not. So he sees things differently. So it's great to have fresh uh, young eyes on shit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And he does a good job. So um, I'm pleased with that. And then it'll be very interesting to see what uh, what new perspectives Blade will bring. Um, oh God, he would be. You know what? This is going to be. I already know. This is going to be a, like twenty years from now. He's going to have the exact same suit as you. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, and he's going to do a story about you guys. And 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 yeah, I could I could see it. You know. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, I could totally see that. He's, and he's got a wicked, he's a wicked show business name too. Yeah, he's got that wicked name. I mean, uh, uh, Blade. The first time I heard it, I was like, "What? I don't know. I don't know if I like that." But no, the more, awesome. the more I think about it, I go, "Yeah, man, I'd want a name like that. I'd want, I'd, I'd, I'd want a name well, where, you know, uh, like my have wrestling." You, have you heard? Uh, have you heard of uh, Doctor Atlantis? Dr. Atlantis. No. Dr. Atlantis, his name is, his real name is Blake Smith. Uh, he runs a uh, podcast by the name of Monster Talk. Yes, yes, I just, and, I'm sorry, uh, I heard that yesterday, actually. Okay, yes, he is. Okay, yeah, uh, Blake, Blake is a great guy, he's a friend of the family, um, but when my wife, Karen, when her mother was introduced to Blake, she misheard his name. Right. And said, this is Blake, and she's like, Blade? Right. And, and Blake thought, oh my God. That is the coolest name ever. Why wasn't I named Blade instead of Blake? Right. There you go. And it, it, you know, 
and he really had this kind of big, you know, uh, epiphany about how cool it was. And uh, we said, all right, that's it. We're naming our kid Blade. Fuck you. You can't take it. We're going to right. name our kid. <laughs> seven. Remember, um, remember, remember seven, and, George Costanza? Uh, and, and it's been met with a really good reception so far. So we were we were a little concerned about what people were going to think. And then we finally got to that point of, fuck, fuck it. Right. Uh, who cares what they think? Uh, if, if Blade doesn't like his name when he gets older, he has every right to change it. Yeah. But... Um, as long as I'm paying the bills, he's Blake. Right. Well, it's funny because I named my son Sterling, and a lot of my you know my relatives are all Italian, and my family tree, they can't even pronounce Sterling, you know. So they they sit there and they they they'll go like my family tree will be Antonio Giuseppe Pino Vito Sterling. <laughs> You know, so so it, it's just it's just people go, why'd you name him that? And I just said, nah, I just wanted, I I didn't want, I want something different. I don't want uh, uh, the same regurgitated shit out there. I want people, people are individuals. You know, uh, people that know yeah. me, you know, they don't. People that know me don't call me Vito. They call me V. You know, uh, uh, so it's it's kind of they people for the longest time people just thought my name was just V. You know. Right. Uh, for some reason, they couldn't say Vito, but that's just the way. Uh, that's not what Catherine calls you. Yeah, Catherine calls me a lot of horrible names, which, uh, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 last night we went to dinner and I pointed out she had an Adam's apple, and uh, she wouldn't, she wouldn't let me touch her last night that when I came weird, home. Though. That is weird. Well, she does have an Adam's apple. Yeah. You know, I, I really think her real name's Keith. Well, there you go. So, yeah. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot some names at you guys, <laughs> and I want you to tell me what you think of the show. Um, like, you don't have to. You could go uh, grade it out of uh, ten. Ten is the best, and one is the worst. Okay. So, what okay. do you what do you think of Ghost Adventures? Well, okay. We have to clarify. Are we talking as a reality TV show or as a comedy? As as um. Fuck you! Now you threw that at me. Just entertainment. Yeah, yeah. as a comedy, it's actually really good. Yes, as a yeah, comedy, it's a yeah, great comedy. Yeah, as a comedy, yeah, it is great. But as a show in general, like uh, not a comedy show, just a show, like uh, uh, let's see, like uh, fuck, that's a hard one because I hate the show. So. <laughs> Um, well, it is. It's, it's, it's a. I mean, you know, for people like us, it is a one. Right. But for for the for you know the studios, the show's genius. Right. The show, you know, it's got this this buff guy who can't read a cue card very well. Right. And uh, you know, he's got his great hair, and all the the girls are wanting him. Right. And they're out there, and he's showing his sensitive side by by you know him shitting his pants every time he hears a noise. It's, um, oh God! It's so a, you know, it's kind of genius in a sense, but it's horribly painful yes. for sane people to watch it yeah. unless they take it as a comedy. So uh, I will go ahead and go with the expected one. Right. Yes. Because he, uh, I saw one where he's like, "We're we're in this uh, uh, hospital, psycho hospital. Uh, we are locked in here for twenty four hours." And then he, as he's walking and explaining that there's no way out, there's a fucking broken window. Like just you know, right, right, right there, you know. And I'm thinking this is the funniest. I gotta write this, you know. Like this, this is great. So yeah, Ghost well, Adventures. You know, you know, I, I watched your or V. Uh, I watched your uh, one of your shows, Spirit Seekers. I thought it was great. Oh, um, thank you. I, I really enjoyed it. And and now that you mention it, I, I I can see that you could get yourself a lot of good material from Ghost Adventures. That's where I get it from. I just sit there and you, you just sit there and watch it and go, um, one episode on uh, Ghost Hunters was, the whole thing was, the guy was scared to fly on a plane. It had nothing to do with ghosts. And he, he wouldn't go on a plane. And I'm thinking, this is the show? This is this we're supposed to be we're supposed to be looking for ghosts and this guy won't get on a plane, you know. So uh, right, I, I, right. To, yeah, to me, it's the characters that I'm more interested in. I'm more interested in in, in Brian and Baxter 
just by the way you guys yeah you know, like it's kind of like reading a book you guys are a great cover but once you start reading the book you go oh there's a meat a lot of meat to this and there's you want to know more about it you want to know oh uh, you know what what do these guys like to eat what what you know it, that's when you get uh what i enjoy you know and when you watch well, these when you watch these shows you just sit there and go well there's not really like the zach guy you already know he does uh he goes on but the other half of the time he's picking up fucking weights and injecting his ass full of roids you know right like i i know him yeah. i know that guy there's no mystery to him well you know here's one of the one of the things that that's been difficult for us is what you're saying, I think, is more in line with the viewing public. That's what they want. But producers are blinded. Um, I won't say producers. I would say TV executives are blinded yeah. by what they think they want. So we get producers coming to us all the time going, we want to make a show with you guys. You guys are great. Um, and then they, they will film a trailer uh, and present it to the TV executives. And the networks will always go, these guys are great. Right. We love their characters. Their right. personalities are perfect. They've got that, we've got what's called the patented Brian and Baxter banter. Right. And uh, they, they love it. And then they say, yeah, let's do this, but can you make them act more like the ghost hunters? Right. I know. And then and we go, nope, nope, and we're not going to do it. You know, if I was you guys, what would be awesome is if you helped out, you actually went... Remember, uh, uh, what was that show? Paranormal... Not Paranormal Kids, Paranormal the one State. before that. Yeah, Paranormal, Paranormal State, State. Where the, the guy would... Uh, <clears throat> the guy would challenge ghosts, or a demon was chasing him from his whole... Uh, you know, since he was a small child, he went at it and... See, my, yeah. my, my character... Oh, that's Paranormal State. Yeah, yeah my yeah. character that I have, the Paul Coffee, is actually I'm kind of making fun of Chip Coffee. So it's kind of, I've, I've taken the, the, cause I, 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 chip coffee cracks me up. I don't care. He just, anything yeah. that man says, I, I just, I just I, laugh, you know? Um, I know a character called Skip Latte. <laughs> <laughs> that Look is, everybody, it's that chip, is our chip, coffee. It's chip cappuccino, so, yeah. <laughs> little Italian, a little Italian guy. Um, so, uh, uh. Yeah, I would love to see you guys, and I, I hope you're, you you know if uh, you, you write it out where you guys go to a house and help people. Um, you know, and if if there was a little girl, it would be more heartfelt uh, just to see. Uh, uh, you know, Brian is cold to her in the beginning, but by the end, <laughs> she gives him a hug. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like if you guys shot Melt something, if you guys shot something like that, I guarantee you, uh, it would totally be picked up because what is out there right now is nothing but horse shit and boring, and that's where I want. I want to know the history. I want to know what you're gonna do, and I love how you'll bring in uh, 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 true professionals. To, to, to talk to these people. Uh, ima imagine the drama of showing uh, a relieved family. Yes. Uh, imagine that. Like at the, at the end of the show, big hugs for everybody. Uh, you guys yeah. would be heroes. Exactly. And that's something where, I, you know, if you guys shot something like that, uh, get a guy with a camera, go to the, you know, uh, uh, fuck, write it out. And uh, uh, it's something where I totally believe that uh, a network would want to see you guys do that, would want... And it's totally up to you guys, whatever you want to do. But I totally think uh, uh, that's something where you going out... I, I love how you're helping out people now, but I think you could reach out so much, uh, you know, a, a, a thousand times what you're doing if, if you had something like that, where, uh, you know, if there's any questions, people are more than, uh, uh, you know, more than welcome to to call in and get, you know, pay a little Mexican guy to reply to them. You know, I mean, it's simple. Fuck it, I'm going to be your... I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really seeing this end scene in my head. I'm really Think seeing about it, it. Like, right Think about the it. show. And then... The little girl's terrified of Brian. Yes. And Brian literally growls at her at one yes. stage. But <laughs> yes. by the end of it, she I hugs do that. They hug. She hugs his leg. 
They hug. She hugs his leg, and Brian acts like he's ignoring her, but when they zoom in, yes. he's got a single tear. Oh, yes, yes. Good. But here's the beauty. Here's the beauty. If they buy the DVD, it shows that he never had a tear. Somebody had to come with an eyedropper. <laughs> wow. And and he and then you got after, it all figured after out. the scene was done, Brian yells out, Get this fucking kid off of me. Wow. Behind <laughs> behind behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind behind the scenes, which 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 is uh, behind behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So it's actually seven DVDs. Yeah. Wow. But I'm telling you, you guys need yeah. to do that. And uh, uh, I I always said you need to. Um, uh, it would be great. Like I I love watching a haunting. I love watching that show. But I would love to see you guys show up right in the middle of a haunting, and just slap the shit out of the girl, going, "You're not possessed." Okay, stop acting like an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we would have uh, a lot of fun. That's for sure. I mean, you know, we, we've got a lot of interesting stories to tell, and I think this uh, this documentary, whatever it turns out to be, is going to be enlightening and uh, a lot of fun. So we'll we'll have to we'll have to see what happens. No, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Well, where are you guys going to any any plugs you want, uh, Brian Baxter? Anything you want to plug away? Well, um. We're basically just doing local stuff right now. So, you know, unless you live in Denver, a whole fuck lot of good it's going to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got our tours and we've got the haunted dinners coming up. Um, we do love uh, talking at colleges and, and universities. Mm-hmm. Uh, we love doing that kind of thing. We just finished uh, giving a large presentation to a, a criminal justice class, of all things. Nice. And, um that went really well. So we love any kind of opportunity to to educate. We totally dig. So if anybody out there happens to be in a place where they see we would we could fit, whether it be conventions or um, you know uh, universities, colleges, uh, elementary schools, we even speak at. Well, that's funny because my son's uh, actually. Let us know. My son's actually. Would you come What's this that? far? Would you come this far north? Oh, if the money's right. My son's yeah, in, exactly. My, he, he just nailed it right there. My son's if in. We can afford it. My we'll son's in there. a criminology course in uh, at uh, university here in Brantford, Ontario, and uh, I, I think this would be right up their alley. Um, so I'll mention it to him. He can mention it to his professors, and uh, you never know. Well, we we did a. Uh, we were in uh, California. Ohlone College has a psychology club, and they have they bring in big speakers every year and uh i think 2000 was it 2012 we were the 12 or 13 yeah yeah, 2012 2012, we were the 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 the, uh big time speakers that they brought in for their uh psychology club and uh, we filled this auditorium and uh, it was a blast and it was uh, some of the stuff that you might have seen on um, our website with us on stage in vegas um is, is kind of the same stuff that we did for them. And uh, it went really well, and they were very happy that they had us. We were one of the most talked about uh, speakers that they'd ever have there and uh, sold out the quickest as well. So, yeah, absolutely, uh, pass our name on, and we are more than happy, you know, um, have gun, will travel. Well, that's great. Yeah, a, absolutely. The school's got enough money because um, I'm broke, so I, I know they're, they're raking in some cash. <laughs> Yeah, and I, that's the Absolutely. thing where I always bother you. I always say, uh, Baxter, you got anything on, uh, any more stuff on YouTube? And he'll throw me a whole bunch of stuff that he's done on YouTube. Um, and uh, uh, it's great. You can't get enough of it. And um, for Halloween, uh, uh, I watched, uh, you know, your your, your your wife, Dr. Karen Stolzno. She does a great um, uh, a story on exorcism like breaking mm-hmm. it down and everything yeah. like that. And I watched that on Halloween and I thought this is fucking fantastic. So Blade's going to have a riot, yeah, you know. No kidding. Bla- Bla- <laughs> Blade's Blade's going to have I could just imagine, a, you know. But anyways, you also got you guys also have a a warning radio uh uh show too. Uh uh Yes. You also do that and uh uh, there's also, uh, you know, uh, there's a Rocky Mountain Paranormal Research Society. That's what Brian and Baxter are. Uh, they do everything yes. from ghosts, poltergeists, UFO, UFO 
Uh, conspiracy theories, urban legends, they're based in Colorado, Denver, Colorado, beautiful Denver. And guys, uh, it's been awesome. Thank you so much. It's a um, lot of fun. You guys were awesome on this. I wanted to ask you so much more stuff, but... Um, I, I got to go for a cream soda enema, so I got to get it. No, I want to ask you, I, I would love to do this, if you guys are into it, I want to do a, a, something in October. I would love to do a, a Halloween kind of show um, and talk about the tours and, and anything else you guys want That's to. Great. But That's a great idea. You guys are not, um, you, you guys are great. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I sound like a kiss ass, but I do appreciate yeah. uh, you taking the time uh, to talk to us and uh, you guys are a class act and uh, uh, you know if you're out there like them on Facebook check them out on Google them Brian and Baxter they have a fucking some of the coolest uh, pictures of these guys where you just you look at the picture and go yeah I want to check these guys out there there's more yeah. to it there uh, so I, I I appreciate you taking the time guys I know it's a uh, um, uh, a pain in the ass sometimes to get on the phone and talk to an idiot in Canada, but um, it's it's I, it means the world to me, and I'm a huge fan of yours. And if I could help you guys out in any way, uh, if you guys need uh, 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 you know help moving, I got a strong back. Uh, right. Uh, you know, anything you need, you get it for me. And if uh, anybody uh, uh, bothers Blade. I'm more than willing to beat the shit out of him, Mark. You know I'm childish yeah, that way. it's 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 just for fun. He he's just mean. Yeah, I'm not a very uh, I I I'm gonna do a show just on bullying, and what we're trying to do is find people that were bullied, and find them and beat the shit out of Bully them. Bully them some more. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, yeah, I mean you got a you got an automatic victim right there. You can you know victimize. So <laughs> so I I want to say thank you. Thanks, uh, guys. To take uh, uh, hopefully I'll talk to you soon please check them out on Facebook guys this is Brian and Baxter check them out like them on Facebook uh, listen to them on Warning Radio um, guys uh, thank you so much uh, congratulations again on your on your new son yes congratulations thank you thank, and, thank uh, you guys for having us on we had a great time and we'll come back anytime you want That's oh great. thank you what are you what are you doing tomorrow <laughs> All right, so um, thank you Not so much. Folks, you've been listening to the Wrecking Crew Comedy Podcast. If you have any questions, please uh, ask. And ideas for ideas for the documentary, too. For yeah, and, and ideas in the documentary. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, we're brought to you by Majestic Garage. Please check them out online. Uh, they are the show's sponsor, and uh, they, they, uh, they, they, they make really cool shit. Uh, I am uh, Vito D'Amico. I'm Mark Arts. And we were talking to Brian and Baxter. We want to thank them. Have a safe and happy weekend, kids. Good night. <laughs>